This is how I found out my dad was following me on OnlyFans. This claim is not my story time, it's on Instagram. My mom and dad had me when they were really young. My mom was 17 and my dad was 19. For some reason, my mom doesn't like talking about him, so I never really found out exactly how they broke up. All I know is that they stayed together until I was five years old. Something really bad happened and then my mom kicked him out of the house. Like I said, I don't even know what happened. When I was 12 years old, he begged my mom to come back and she let him live in the apartment we had. But he's pretty much a deadbeat. He didn't help my mom pay for the bills. He didn't even want to get a job. He even went as far as begging my mom to become a stripper. He said that she would make way more money than the job she had. She was a secretary at the time. When I was 15, he left our house again. Never got a bad feeling from him when he was living with us though. With a lot of hard work, my mom was able to put me through college. I graduated and I got a really good job. I bought my mom and me a house and we moved in together. Then COVID happened and I lost my job. Friends suggested I start OnlyFans and I decided to do it. I started making a lot more money than I ever thought I would. Some months I was making around $20,000. This one guy would send me $1,000 every single week. In exchange, I would send him private photos. Everything was totally fine until he started asking me questions. He would ask me things like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite dessert? Because it's OnlyFans, I never really answered honestly. But then one day he told me, you love The Little Mermaid, don't you? And I was like, what? Because The Little Mermaid was my favorite movie as a kid. Watched it at least three times a week when I was a kid. First, I thought it was a cousin playing a joke on me. So I decided to block them. The next day, I get another message. This one says, I remember how you used to love hot dogs. That's when I really shit myself because my dad and I would make hot dogs every single Friday. It was our thing together. Like I said, he was a deadbeat, so he couldn't afford anything more than cheap hot dogs. And that's when he said, I have a confession. And before I could reply, he said, I'm your dad. I felt so disgusted. I blocked him and then blocked him from my cell phone too. That's when he sends me a long text message explaining why he signed up to my OnlyFans. He said that he was just trying to get to know me, that all he really wanted was to get me back as his daughter. Then why ask for nudes? As soon as I read his long text message about why he signed up, I once again blocked him. 20 minutes later, there's a knock on my door. Yep. It's my fucking father. Started knocking on the door so hard my neighbors came out. Called 911 and they came within a minute. I live in an area where there aren't too many people. So my house is really easy to find. Saw my dad walk to the backyard and try to get in through the back. That's when a cop stopped him and asked him what he was doing. Then he told the cop that I had invited him over. Then the cop comes to my door and asked me if I had invited him. I told him I didn't. Then I told the cop about OnlyFans. My dad was so ashamed he actually denied it. But of course I had all the receipts. I showed the cop my phone and the cop told him that he needed to leave me alone. He left my house and I didn't have the heart to tell my mom. But later that night, I see another person sign up to my OnlyFans. Turns out it was my dad again. This time he was offering me $3,000 for more pictures. And he confessed that he couldn't help but love me as a woman because I didn't grow up with him. Excuse me, sir? You raised me for half of my childhood. Wanted to get a restraining order, but the judge says it's not that easy. So now I'm considering closing my OnlyFans. I don't think it's fair though. What should I do? I'm 25 female and my soon-to-be ex, 28 male, is gay and hid that from me. I found out because I caught him cheating and he admitted that he knew he wasn't attracted to me in that way, but he wanted kids in a normal life. I don't care that he's gay, but I will never forgive him for leaving me on so that he could use me to have kids. So it's over. End of story. The problem is, his family are fundamentalists, not jobs except for a few members, and his mother is the interfering mother-in-law from hell. Not being related to her anymore is another plus to leaving. His family doesn't believe in divorce. So under the guise of picking up some paperwork and other items I have found that were my exes, she cornered me about how I'm being childish and marriage is about commitment, forgiveness, and working through problems, etc. It became apparent that my ex didn't tell his family that he cheated. He told his mom that I was divorcing him because we weren't having sex often enough for me. I tried to be patient and explain that he had cheated, and that's why. I wasn't going to go into greater detail because I know how his parents are, and it's another business. Mother-in-law's advice, I kid you not, was that men are just that way and if I want to have sex more and for him not to stray that I should make myself more attracted to my husband and be a better wife. I lost the plot completely. It had been a sad and hard day already and that was the last straw. Here's where I might be the a-hole. I told her that the only thing that would make me more attracted to my ex would be a sex change operation and that I hope that he and his boyfriend adopted her some grandchildren so that she could finally shut the hell up about it. Not my finest moment, but she just hit the worst and rawest nerves as she could have and I exploded. It's evidently turned into a huge family drama. He's probably going to be disowned and my ex called sobbing that I've ruined his life out of spite. I don't really know how to feel about it. I do feel bad for him that his parents are such awful people and there were just no good outcomes for him, but I also feel like he made his own bed here too. Also, he's known that he was gay since before he met me, so this wasn't a new discovery or admission to himself. He has a boyfriend that he's been dating since six months before we were married. I went through his computer after catching him in the act and kicking him out and found messenger logs and other evidence going back before he even started dating me. He literally set this up so that he could have a nice Mormon family on the surface to keep his family happy. That's it. He never loved me at all. I was just the first girl to express a sustained interest. So, am I in the wrong for outing my ex to get his mother off my back?
I finally got on radio silence for my ex's immediate family after the incident with my mother-in-law, so that's a relief. I work at the same place with a couple of his extended family members, so I still have to see them, but they haven't brought it up. They all know to contact me only through my lawyer now, and everything big that belongs to my ex has been passed on already, so anything else can be forwarded through legal office now. I shouldn't have to interact directly with them, but it's hard to avoid people forever in a small town. My ex tried to break into the house the day that I posted that story while I was at work, and I pressed charges. I don't know how it's going to shake out or why he's doing this when it can only get him in worse trouble, but I'm letting my lawyer and police handle it, and I'm staying with my parents for a little while until I feel safer. I don't know what's happened between him and his family and I don't want to try to find out. My ex and I guessed his family before the fight with mother-in-law spread rumors about me and it's made living here very hard. It's a smallish community and people treat me differently now. The local stake president has been kind and, after being told about the cheating, no mention of orientation, said he would try to help with the rumors. I don't want to leave the area, but I'm thinking that I may need to, at least for a while, after the legal stuff is over. My lawyer and I have decided to go for annulment, since that'll take less time and be harder to fight in this case. Hopefully the ex won't contest it. I'm glad that we never combined finances, so there won't be too many joint assets to sort out. I will be okay financially still. This could have been much worse if I was a stay-at-home mom or something. I'm also going to start therapy soon. I was thinking about it anyway, even before all of this came out, because I've been feeling depressed over how things were working in my marriage for a while. I don't want to lose any more of myself and my time than I already have, and I hope one day I'll feel good enough to start dating again. Also, please, don't generalize gay people because of my story. There are LGBTQ plus people close to my heart, and they would never do this to anyone. I don't believe that Adam people is generally okay, or I wouldn't feel so bad about all this. My ex's family said this up with their intolerance. I wish none of it happened for me and for him. Am I wrong for leaving my mother-in-law's funeral after my husband lied to me? So my mother-in-law, my husband's mom, passed away two weeks ago. She lived hours away in her hometown and we had to drive six hours to get there and attend the funeral later. At first, I didn't want to go and the reason is because of my brother-in-law, Michael. He's my husband's half-brother. Mother-in-law isn't his mom. Michael and I had some issues in the past that I will not elaborate on. I went low contact with him, then full on no contact. I asked my husband if Michael was going to be there and he said it was a no-brainer since he and mother-in-law had a close relationship. I didn't want to go and my husband argued about it for hours, then came home later and said that Michael would not be there due to travel issues. He lives in another state. I decided to go with my husband, but later on, I was shocked to see Michael walk up to us with his wife and daughter. I froze in my spot and looked at my husband because he lied about him not coming. I did not confront him because they embraced each other and started crying. His wife was watching as I turned around and walked away. I went to a hotel and stayed there. My husband called right after the funeral and was lashing out, calling me ridiculous and unbearable for pulling this stunt and for walking out of the funeral and leaving him there alone. I said he lied to me about Michael's presence at the funeral and he wasn't alone. Apparently, he had his family with him. He got loud saying that I was insane to expect his half-brother to miss the funeral of his stepmother and told me to get a clue. I felt so unsaid that I started crying when he said that I was useless. I packed and went home, but he further argued that I showed no empathy or support by not only walking out of the funeral, but also going home as well. We argued when he came home and I explained again how he lied to me, but he kept saying that it was illogical to expect Michael not to show up. He told me that I was stuck up and need to get over myself. So am I wrong for leaving after I felt uncomfortable by Michael's presence? Edit. It doesn't matter what Michael did and what issues we had. A lot of family were calling me harsh for the no contact, but that's a boundary I put and it should be respected no matter the reason behind it. When Michael first saw me, he looked at his wife and she looked at me like she was watching my reaction. There were kids around and I tried to act as calm as I could. Okay, I did some digging to find out what the reason was that she had this boundary with her brother-in-law and it's as stupid as you think it is. When her husband's father died, there was a disagreement about who inherits the house. His half-brother got it and her husband didn't want to fight it, but she did. And so that's why she goes no contact with him because she wanted the house, even though it's not like her place to ask for the house. So with that, do what you want with that information. That's why she's mad at him. There's no, I, I would give respect to like something like that's a boundary I want to set. Like he did something wrong to me. I get that. But it's about inheritance that wasn't even yours. Your husband wasn't mad about it. Why are you? I have been obsessed with the lives of the rich and famous ever since I was a child. At age 14, I even bought a $200 mug on eBay that Prince William allegedly had drank tea from. Anyways, let me tell you the story of how I grew up as a normal teenage girl, but then rose to the highest echelons of European royalty. I dined with the kings and queens of countries, and I dated real princes all over the continent. Here's how I did it. After I graduated college, I got a job as an assistant for a famous European royal couple. I can't tell you their names, but you've heard of them for sure. The husband was already in his 60s, and I think he only hired me because I was pretty. On my first day at work, he even suggested that I should start wearing short skirts to work because it would lift the mood in the office. Yeah, he wasn't the innocent and loyal husband the media was portraying him to be. And almost every afternoon, an extremely gorgeous woman in their early 20s went into his office room and locked the door. 
I wondered if he was having an affair with her, so out of curiosity, I eavesdropped on their door, and guess what? I heard some very specific noises. I think you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, strictly speaking, I didn't just work for the husband, but also for his wife. And although I'd never met her in person, I felt it was my duty to let her know about her husband's affair. I turned on my smartphone camera and held it up to a small window to his office. It was so high, I couldn't see through it myself. The husband noticed my phone and screamed, Who dares to film me? He stormed out of his office, pointed his finger at me and said, I am going to kill you for that. Now give me your smartphone. No, I won't give you my phone. I also work for your wife and it's my duty to inform her about your affair. Oh, don't pretend you were acting out of duty. My wife and I have been married for 30 years. She would have a heart attack if she found out I was cheating on her. It was indeed a complicated matter, so I told him I had to think about it for a while. But the next day, he called me into his office and said, Fine, tell me, how much money do you want? A million dollars? I am not blackmailing you. Oh, cut the bullshit and tell me the truth. What do you want from me? I stood there for a while thinking before I finally said, I want to become a royal. What? That's ridiculous. You can only be born into a royal family or marry into a royal family. Those are the only two options. I don't care. You will find a way or else I'll send the video of you messing around with that woman to every newspaper in the country. Well, maybe he cared about his marriage and his wife after all, because somehow he managed to fabricate an elaborate story of how I was a bastard child to one of his deceased uncles, and even his wife believed the story when I met her for the first time in person. He also gave me a birth certificate and passport under my new name. Now that you are part of the royal family, you'll receive a monthly allowance of $20,000. Does that sound good to you? That is a very generous offer, but I prefer to spend as much money as I want and to send you the bill for it afterward, okay? I could tell he was furious, but my silence came at a high price. Anyway, I greatly enjoyed my new royal life. I rented a $20,000 a month house, dropped another 10k a month on designer clothes, and most importantly, I was invited to royal events all over Europe. And while I was only a low-ranking noble, I still stood out because I was a good-looking woman, and I didn't mind showing what I got. The royal husband often told me to dress more modestly and not draw too much attention to myself, or else my made-up backstory of being an illegitimate child would be exposed. But I couldn't help it. I wanted to find my prince, literally. So I made sure I was the hottest and most eye-catching girl at every gala I attended. One evening, I got approached by a butler who said, Excuse me, miss. I was sent to you by my master. He would like to ask you out on a date. I'm sure you are familiar with Prince. Of course I was familiar with his master. He was one of the best looking European royals. The reason he didn't approach me in person was that we were attending a charity event with tons of journalists and paparazzi present. Had they seen him approach and flirt with me, we would have appeared in every gossip magazine on the planet. So instead the butler gave me his master's address and I went to his hotel room later that night. There you are. I gotta say, you look stunning in that dress you wore today. Oh, thank you. You were looking good, too. This prince was very confident, but he also turned out to be a bit of a snob. He asked, Do you prefer a 1990 DRC Latash or an 85 Chateau Margaux? Of course, I had no clue what he was talking about, so I only responded, I take the latter. He then shook his head and called me a tasteless pleb, whatever that meant. So, what university did you go to? No, wait, let me guess. Cambridge or Oxford? I blushed because I had actually just gone to a small, no-name community college, but I wanted him to like me and responded, No, actually, I went to Harvard. We ended up drinking both bottles of wine, and the prince ended up so drunk he told me something shocking. Look, I hate my brother more than anyone else. He's a douchebag, and worse, he is first in line to become king. However, he fell in love with a filthy commoner, and once he marries her, he will lose his royal status, meaning that I will be king. But of course, only if I marry someone of royal blood. You mean, someone like me? Uh, listen, you aren't the girl of my dreams. You're a low-rank royal, and you have the manners of a farm girl. But even if I was married to you for just a single day, I'd stay king for the rest of my life. Afterward, of course, I'd immediately divorce you again. Okay, but what would be in it for me? Once I'm the king, I'll be a deca-billionaire. I could pay you whatever you want. And most importantly, I'll be much richer than my douchebag brother. I wasn't sure if he was serious or just drunk. I mean, we had just met, but I figured he must have been thinking about this plan for a while. Anyway, we became a couple and started dating each other in secret over the next two years. Once, my prince rented us a private island in the Maldives, where a paparazzi sneaked onto our island and took a picture of us kissing on the beach. 
To my surprise, the paparazzi didn't even try to publish the photos in any tabloids. Instead, he offered to let us buy his camera with the pictures on it from him. He demanded 250,000 US dollars, which was a lot of money. But we accepted the offer because neither of us wanted the whole world to find out we were dating. And while dating a wealthy man was exciting, I often felt ashamed of myself. Deep down, I knew he was only interested in me because I was pretty and because he needed me to become king. Otherwise, he didn't seem to like or respect me at all. Meanwhile, I come from a family of very impressive women. My grandmother was the first woman to become a pilot in the country I come from. She tried to fly to all seven continents, but unfortunately died in 1950 in a plane crash on her way to Australia. That's why my mom ended up growing up in an orphanage where she was abused for many years. But despite her difficult childhood, she managed to finish her studies and become a successful podiatrist, which is a foot doctor. Meanwhile, I was just a fraud. I'd scammed myself into a world full of rich and arrogant jerks while trying to impress a prince who only used me for his own benefit. Worst of all, growing up, I had always claimed that I cared about global warming and climate change, but now I was flying around on private jets and driving expensive cars causing a ton of pollution. Well, one morning, the prince stormed into my room and screamed, My brother! He has announced his wedding to his commoner girlfriend, which means that I will soon be the first in line to become king. He seemed so happy and I was excited too. I mean, soon I would become a queen and be rich and famous, just like I had always dreamed of. But after his brother got married, the prince took me to his home to introduce me to his mom. I was incredibly nervous because I still didn't know all the rules a royal must follow. I especially hated the food etiquette because there were always like five spoons next to my plate and I never knew which one to use when. However, the prince's mother greeted me warmly. I am glad to finally meet you. So you are the niece of King of Yes, my queen. I feel honored to finally meet you. We sat down at a table, which was set with many of the finest dishes available. Everything would have been perfect if it wasn't for the queen who kept staring at me. So, I must admit that I did some research on you before you came here. Oh god, suddenly I got nervous. What did she know? I called your uncle and asked him what kind of girl you are. I hope you don't mind my curiosity. I just wanted to make sure my son had picked the right girl to become his wife. Oh, no problem. I fully understand your concerns. Well, your uncle informed me that you aren't actually a real royal. The prince spat out his drink and yelled, What? Your girlfriend is a con artist, a scammer. She is a commoner. Is that true? Did you lie to me all this time? Tell me! I shamefully look away. It was so embarrassing, but the prince flew into a rage and kept screaming at me. You worthless piece of garbage wasted my time. Two years I spent with you for what? For nothing. I decided to just leave the room because I knew I had screwed up and there was nothing left for me to say. But this story doesn't end here. I was pretty angry too. My royal uncle had revealed my secret to the queen and thereby ruined my chance to become a real princess. But I still had the video of him cheating on his wife, so I was in full revenge mode. I stormed into his office and said, Why did you tell her? Oh, you fool. Once your wedding plans had become public, the media would have exposed your little secret anyway. I saved you from a big and humiliating scandal. Oh, really? The prince had promised me $25 million for marrying him. We had even drawn up a contract. Suddenly, the husband became quiet. He knew what I wanted. And guess what? I am filthy rich now. $25 million. Boom shakalaka. I also retired from my royal life, and I'm glad to be back among normal people. They are less stuck up and more fun to be around anyway. Cheers. I hate my twin sister because she lied to our family. I'll try to keep this short. I just want to get it out. My sister and I, 20 female, are twin sisters, almost identical, and she fucked me up completely. I'm what people would call the outgoing twin, while my sister is a shy one. We're as close as twins are, but my mom refused to treat or let anyone treat us as the same person as we are not really glued to the hip. She has her group of friends and I have mine, and she's really into dating. It's not an attack, but it's important, and I'm really not. But because of the way we are, people believe I'm the one who's having fun, and she just stays in her dorm all day, which is not true at all. Well, someone did her revenge porn on my sister and sent a video of her getting oh no i can't <laughs> well someone did a revenge porn on my sister and sent a video of her getting by two guys to our dad elder brother and us with a fucked up message the video wasn't taken directly on her face you can tell it's one of us but it's not close enough or hd enough to tell which so the next day our parents asked to talk to us our elder brother is there too and i'm like okay i'll let her talk since it's clearly not me and not my business she tells them it's me she fucking said it was me. I don't know why she lied though. Our parents didn't care at all. Like they're more concerned about the way she, me, I don't know, since the video is hers. 
felt and I wanted to proceed. I was stunned. I said it wasn't me, but my parents didn't believe me. They kept saying it was okay and that I was already an adult and that things happen and they won't shame me. That the one to blame are the ones sending the video and not me. My elder brother had to get them out of my face because I was on the verge of tears. I don't know what's worse. My sister lying with no reason or my parents not believing me. They left the room to talk to each other and I could only whisper to my brother that it wasn't me. And he said he believed me. He berated our sister in a low volume and she just sat there crying saying sorry. Things are weird now. My sister said she panicked and since the one in the video isn't me, I said I won't proceed and if the video gets out, I'll scream my ass out saying it's not me. I don't even want to talk about how my parents are acting. Hey guys, my name's Addison and I'm still shaking after what my father did to me when I was 16. You see, my mom left me and my dad when I was 8. She lives in another part of the country and barely contacts us. After the divorce, my dad was lost. He had a hard time coping with his emotions and raising me. So I tried my best to help him with everything. House chores, cooking, even searching for a job. After a while, he got better. He found a job, and he seemed pretty happy. Our life was perfect. He would help me with math when I had a hard time understanding, and I'd even help him fix his motorbike in the garage. But a couple of years ago, he got this big promotion and everything started falling apart. We both were pretty excited about his promotion, as it meant that we would be able to go on holiday, maybe even travel a bit. But we didn't get to do any of that, because she came along. One evening, when we were hanging out in the garage, he told me that he found another woman, and he's planning on marrying her. I was horrified at first, since I didn't even know he was dating someone, but I decided to support him. I should be glad that he's happy. Then he told me that she's moving in with us. I'm gonna have a stepmom. Only if I knew back then how evil she is, maybe I could have stopped him. I was so nervous at first. What if she's gonna change our relationship? But then, how horrible can she be if my amazing father fell in love with her? Well, turns out my father doesn't have the best taste in women. She moved in with hundreds of her stuff. She had like 20 boxes only for her clothes. My dad asked me to move some of mine so she would have enough closet space. The first red flag for me was that she didn't have a job. She lived off of my father and didn't even help us with anything around the house. She would tell me that her room seems messy and that I should clean it. She would then sit around watching reality TV and complaining about what a horrible job I'm doing. She started asking my father for money and spending it to buy the most ridiculous things. She bought some fancy dog, then after a week or so, she got bored with it and ordered me to take care of it. She bought these designer dresses that she never wore. It was getting crazy. When we were alone at our home, she would nag me all the time, saying that I'm already 16, maybe I could find a job and help my father instead of sitting around after school. I decided that I've had enough and I should confront my father about it. Then this horrible evening came. My father came home, we were having dinner that I cooked, and, as always, she was saying that the food is cold, that I could at least try to make it taste better. I was getting ready to confront her, but then she said the most ridiculous idea. She said, Honey, don't you think that this house is a little too small for all of us? I think we should get a bigger one. I heard Sally is selling her house, which would be perfect. My dad sighed and told her that he doesn't have the money, and then she dared to suggest that he could invest my college money into her new house. My dad, of course, told her that that's not going to happen, but apparently she was ready for his reaction and dropped another bombshell. I'm pregnant, she shouted with excitement, and that was it. That's how she got my father to agree to sell out my future for her own pleasure. I broke down telling him that he's crazy and that she's a horrible woman to even suggest that. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't help around the house. She won't even be a good mom. She started crying, so of course, I looked like the bad guy in the situation. My father got so angry, he told me, how dare you treat my pregnant wife like this, and suggested that I should just move out. I was so furious that I moved out in a week. So here I was living in a ridiculously small apartment at 16 
working two jobs just to put some food on my table and maybe save up a little bit to eventually go to college. But that's not even the most frustrating part. After a couple of months of me moving out, my father started calling me and complaining about my stepmom. He started telling me that she has doubts about having a baby and she's spending so much money that he's soon gonna go bankrupt. I really just wanted to hang up, but one time he called me crying, sobbing like a little boy. He told me that his boss fired him and my stepmom is asking for a divorce. Of course she is, I thought. I didn't say it. I knew that it had only hurt him more. I invited him to stay at my place for a while until he figured something out. And yeah, of course, they got a divorce. My father managed to apologize for what he did, and I forgave him. I don't know if it's going to be easy for us to get back to the way we were, but we're going to work through it. At least there's one thing this whole mess taught me. You have to value the ones that stay by your side when you're at your worst. That is family. And even though he hurt me, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to do for my little brother when he comes into this world, too. My life is like a true Cinderella story, but I don't mean the parts with the glass slipper and the talking animals. I had a real evil stepmother and stepsister. I remember people saying that my real mom, dad, and I were the perfect family. We lived simply and we loved each other very much. We always went to the park to feed the ducks. That was our special place. I loved throwing bits of bread while my parents sat on the bench holding hands. My mom and dad were still super in love with each other. I never thought that happy time would come to an end. I believed all the bedtime stories they would read to me at night. I believed that I would have a happily ever after. Do you want your own happily ever after? If you do, click like and subscribe to our channel. Only a few months after my eighth birthday, my mom got sick. There were a lot of trips to the hospital. My parents always declared that my mom would get better, so it was a great shock to my dad when she didn't. After her funeral, my dad was a mess. I tried to take care of him as much as I could, but I always heard him crying at night. I missed my mom horribly, but she was the love of my dad's life. But somehow, he pulled himself together for me. That's why it was such a surprise when my dad got remarried in just over a year. I don't know if Angela cast a spell on him or whatever. It happened really fast. One day, he told me he met a nice friend from work. The week after that, he told me they were going to get married. I tried not to mind it. Deep inside, I knew that my dad was still heartbroken about losing my mom. I wanted him to be happy. In a month's time, my dad got married. I was a bridesmaid, along with Angela's own daughter, Stacy, who was a year younger than me. Right after the wedding, Angela decided that we couldn't fit in our small house. She wanted to move to a bigger place, with a pool and a big garden. My dad agreed, but like I said, it was like he was bewitched. He always just nodded at everything that Angela said. We moved into a huge house that cost a fortune. My dad had to focus on his business to make sure that we had enough money. I didn't see him a lot, but all his hard work paid off. We got rich really fast. Stacy and I got trust funds all of a sudden. Angela wasn't so bad at first. I knew that she was kind of jealous of me, but I thought it was all normal. I tried very hard to be like a true daughter to her. I made her breakfast in bed. I brought her flowers on Mother's Day, but she never warmed up to me. I tried to befriend Stacy too, but she was always with her mother. When I was 14, my dad got sick. It was stage three cancer. There was nothing the doctors could do. I was devastated. He told me not to worry. Angela was going to take care of me. On his deathbed, with all of us huddled around him, he told me not to be sad. I'm going to see your mom again, he said with a whisper. Even when he was already dying, I could see the hopeful look in his eyes. I knew then that he was still in love with my mother. But I also saw Angela's eyes. Her eyes weren't red from crying. Her eyes were red because she was angry. Somehow, life went on after that. I knew my dad wanted me to go on. I still went to high school. But Angela found ways to shut me out of everything else. She conveniently forgot about my birthday. She took Stacy and left me alone on holidays. She always bought the best things for her daughter. But when I needed money, she told me that we barely had enough. One time, she said that she needed my room and ordered me to move into a small, unused room in the basement. 
We got into a big fight after that. With my trust fund, I knew I had money for college. I got into a state university and decided to get an apartment on campus. I just couldn't live at that house anymore. One day, I decided to check my mailbox. There were two letters that arrived weeks ago. One was from the college. My check for the second semester bounced. There was also a note from my landlord. She couldn't cash in my check to pay for last month's rent. I needed to settle it immediately so I wouldn't get evicted. What was going on? I quickly jumped into my car and drove home. I needed to clear this up with Angela. I heard the most terrible thing. She told me that she got a special power of attorney to use up my money. She needed that money for her own business. All the money that my dad had saved up all those years was gone. What? I cried. Y you can't do that. But she could, and she already did. How will I pay for college? I asked her angrily. You'll have to hustle for the money like we all do, she replied. Then Stacy came in. She was carrying an armload of shopping bags from Gucci. Mom, Stacy said, I finally found the perfect dress for your wedding. My eyes widened in shock. What wedding? And if they could afford Gucci, they still had money and a ton of it. Angela just wanted to cut me off. My wedding is none of your business. There's no money here for you, she softly said. Then she told me to get out of her house. That's when I finally saw her for what she truly was. An awful, greedy woman. I was fuming from head to toe. I could feel the anger coursing through my body like hot lava. I jumped back into my car and drove away while I screamed curses at her. Witch! Devil in disguise! I was so upset that I wasn't thinking clearly anymore. All I knew was that I was angry and suddenly very hungry. I decided to swing by the grocery store. I called one of my friends and told her what Angela did. She's a gold digger, I said while placing all my purchases at the checkout counter. Angela married my dad to get money and now she's going to marry someone else. Suddenly, I heard a gasp. It came from the bag boy who was putting my stuff in the grocery bag. He was staring at me. I guess my voice was a bit loud by then. I pulled out my debit card as usual. Sorry, miss. Your card's been denied, the cashier suddenly told me. Oh, no. In my anger, I totally forgot that my debit card was linked to my trust fund. If Angela took out the money for my rent and tuition fee, then my monthly allowance was gone as well. If you ain't got no money, you shouldn't be buying so much stuff, cried a man in the back of the line. Would you like to pay in cash instead? The cashier asked me kindly. I blushed a bright scarlet. I was so embarrassed. I knew that I had literally no cash inside my purse. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Hey, the man in the back of the line said again. Are you going to pay or not? We're waiting here. I was about to say that I'll just put everything back on the shelf when the bag boy butted in. Hey, miss, you've got $200 in your grocery bag? What? I cried. He opened the bag and showed me. I nervously pulled the money out. Silly girl, said the woman behind me. She doesn't even know where she puts her money. After I got my change, I practically ran out of the grocery store. How did I get $200 in my grocery bag? Did I forget that I had money there? It felt like a really lucky coincidence that there would be money just waiting for me when I really needed it. But I forgot that mysterious money soon enough. Now, I was worrying about how to pay for school and rent. After a few days of panicking and crying, I heard a knock on my door, but there was nobody there. Instead, I saw a small box on my doorstep. It was wrapped like a present. Inside, I found a wallet with a credit card, and the credit card had my name on it. A note fell out of the wallet. It read, here's a little something to help you. Please don't hesitate to use the credit card, and please don't think that this is a scam. I just want to help. It was signed, a friend. I was so confused. What was happening? Did I have a fairy godmother somewhere? First, it was the mysterious cash. Now there was a mysterious credit card. I had to find out where it was coming from. So I called the bank that issued the credit card. They told me that everything was in order. It was under my name. And then they thanked me for giving an advanced payment for whatever I charged on the card. I was in shock. Who is this friend? How did I get this lucky? But then I got even luckier. The next morning, I got a call from my college. They told me to come over to pick up the receipt of the second semester's tuition. They even thanked me for paying the next year in advance. Then the day got even weirder. My landlord suddenly knocked on my door. 
She gave me a basket of muffins as thanks. I stammered and asked her what for. I got your rent payments for a whole year. Thanks for giving it all in advance, she replied. The mystery of the credit card and all that money haunted me for a while. I felt so paranoid. Somebody had my information out there. What if they had committed a crime and the paper trail traced back to me? But there was no denying that I needed that money. Angela left me with absolutely zero dollars. I was very cautious with charging things on the credit card. I only bought food, toiletries, and some supplies for school. I felt like it was a stroke of good luck. I wanted to pay back the universe for giving me such a blessing, so I started to do volunteer work. I helped in the shelter and was even involved in a pet rescue mission. It was all going well until the day I saw Stacy. I bumped into her at the library. I found out that she was a freshman here now. She was also wearing designer clothes from head to toe. It's nice to see you, she said. I like your homeless look. And you're really good at cutting your own hair. Did you use kitchen scissors? The people around me started to laugh. I shot an angry look at Stacy and saw the librarian from the corner of my eye. She looked angry at the noise. But the librarian's face suddenly changed when she saw my stepsister. Miss Stacy, the librarian gushed. It's so nice to see you here. Please thank your parents for donating the money for our new library wing. I was stunned. Stacy looked like a hundred dollar bill stuffed in LV and Prada, and they were giving money away. I'll tell them, Stacy purred. We're only happy to help. Yeah, right. Her mother practically stole all that money from me. Then Stacy turned around and handed me a $20 bill. It's my gift to you. At least you won't need to cut out coupons anymore, she said sweetly. I threw the money right back at her smug, made-up face and stormed out. I had never felt as angry as I did then. Angela was a witch and a thief. She was a wolf in sheep's clothing. I wanted to hurt her so bad. And Stacy too. I walked to the mall to clear my head. Right now, I couldn't think clearly. I really wanted to go back to Stacy and whack her with her stupid Hermes tote bag. I took a deep, calming breath and shook my head. What good will that do? Angela will probably send some cops over to arrest me. But I couldn't totally stop thinking about them. What really bothered me the most? Apart from the fact that Angela took my money. I was really angry at how they looked down on me now. Like I was dirt on their Prada shoes. Suddenly... I looked up and found myself in front of a clothing store. I didn't think. I just went in and started to pick out new clothes. It was petty, but I wanted to dress better than Stacy. When the counter rang up the bill, it was enormous. But I didn't care. I quickly gave the credit card to the cashier. I just wanted to feel better. My arms were heavy with the weight of all the shopping bags. I thought it would make me happy, but it didn't. I cried all the way home. I took a quick shower and wore my oldest pair of pajamas. It reminded me of the home I once had. Sobs burst out of me while I lay in bed. I want someone to love me. I want someone to take care of me. I want my parents back. But the next morning, I managed to pull myself together. I decided to bring all the clothes back. If I kept them, I would be taking advantage of someone who just wanted to help me. Angela took advantage of my dad that way. Back in school, I kept seeing Stacy. She pranced around the campus like she owned it. Perhaps maybe she did. I heard a lot of rumors about her. With the money that they donated to the school, of course people started to get curious. There were a lot of whispers. I heard that Angela got married again to an even richer man. Rumor was that he was a billionaire. I also heard that they bribed the university to let Stacy in. She flunked the entrance exam, so they found a way for her to get in. Then, I heard the biggest news yet. Angela and her billionaire were getting divorced because she was caught cheating on her husband. When I saw Stacy after the news broke out, she was still flaunting her expensive things around, but she looked terrible. There were circles under her eyes that couldn't be concealed by the most expensive makeup. I thought about their circumstances a lot. It dawned on me that I was also practically living off someone else's mysterious money, but I didn't want to do that anymore. So, I got a real job. I became a waitress in a restaurant near the school. The pay was low, but I got by with the tips. Soon I stopped using the credit card. I had enough money of my own. It was kind of scary, but it also felt liberating. After a month or so, I got a letter. If you're free at four o'clock this afternoon, please meet me at the park. I will wait for you beside the ducks. Again, it was signed, a friend. I could not wait to meet my angel. I went early. I sat there and waited to finally see the person who helped me so much. There was a man who was walking towards me. He looked vaguely familiar, but I just couldn't place him. Hi, Isabella. 
he said as he shook my hand. I'm your friend. I couldn't stop staring at him. I knew that I had seen him before. He must have noticed. Do I look familiar? He asked. Then he said the most amazing thing. Hey, miss, you've got $200 in your grocery bag? I got a major flashback from that trip to the grocery store. I jumped out and shouted, You're the bag boy! Yeah, he replied. I put that money in your bag. What? Why? Who was this guy? How could he be just a bag boy if he could give me that money and an unlimited spending on my credit card? He gave a little laugh and said, My real name is Steve. Then Steve told me the craziest story. He was actually the son of Angela's latest billionaire ex-husband. His father owned the whole chain of groceries. Steve had to work there so he could learn about the business from the ground up. But there was something that bugged me about Angela, he continued. I never liked her. I thought she was a con artist and a gold digger too. When I heard you talking about your stepmother at the counter, I realized that she was my new stepmother. Steve said that he hired a detective right after he realized that I was talking about the same woman. He also asked the detective to track me down. That's how he found out about my name and current situation. Steve continued, I also found out that Angela was having an affair right under my father's nose. I told father about it and he quickly filed for divorce. You actually saved us a lot of money because Angela was planning to use father's money for God knows what. I wanted to thank you, but I didn't want it to feel like charity. So I paid your school tuition and your rent. Then I got you a credit card. You've been so good to me, I replied. How can I ever repay you? Well, he said with a shy smile, I have to be completely honest. Ever since the day I saw you at the store, you kind of took my breath away. That's why I didn't mind hiding that cash inside your grocery bag. I didn't want you to lose your dignity in front of all those other customers. After I met you, I couldn't get you out of my mind. Don't freak out, I'm not a stalker. At first, I thought it was because we shared a common enemy. But when I learned more about you, it wasn't about Angela anymore. Would you like to go for a bite to eat sometime? Like a date? I was taken aback. A date would be nice, I replied cautiously. But not dinner, okay? Let's have brunch or lunch. You want it during the day just in case I turn out to be a serial killer or anything, he replied with a laugh. I had to laugh too. But I got a good feeling about this. Somehow, I knew that my parents would approve. So you see, my life was really like a Cinderella story. I even got the Prince Charming in the end. Stacy and I had been best friends pretty much since we were born. Our moms met at an antenatal class and we were born just two weeks apart. Stacy was older than me and she sometimes teased me about it, but she was never actually mean. Our moms took us to all the same baby classes and toddler groups. I can't remember a time when Stacy wasn't around. She lived on the next block, and we did everything together. When it was time for us to go to high school, Stacy's parents talked about sending her to a different school, but we both begged her not to. We wanted to sit together in class, and if anyone tried to bully one of us, the other would make it stop. Lucky for us, Stacy's parents finally agreed to let us go to the same school, and even though we were put in different classes for some subjects, we spent as much time together as possible. I don't remember when I first realized I had a crush on Stacy. I mean, I always thought she was really pretty. She's got long brown hair that almost reaches her waist, and the cutest freckles across her nose. Her eyes are a really unusual green color, and they sparkle when she's excited about something. But just because I thought she was pretty didn't mean I fancied her, right? I do remember when Stacy started talking about boys. There was this one kid in class, Jed, and she was going on and on about how cute he was, how funny he was, how much she wanted him to hang out with us. I didn't really like him. I thought he was a bit of a jerk. But as time went on, all Stacy wanted to talk about was boys. So I pretended I felt the same way. I pretended I liked Jed's friend, Mason, so we could talk about our crushes. It was a stupid thing to do. And then Stacy suggested the four of us go to the mall together and asked the two boys if they wanted to come. They said yes, but as soon as we got there, she and Jed went off together, leaving me and Mason on our own. He tried to hold my hand at one point, but I wouldn't let him. It was super awkward. And when Jed and Stacy came back, Stacy was acting all dumb and girly, giggling and batting her eyelids at Jed all the time. Later, she told me they made out for a while. She even told me all the details. How Jed had used his tongue, and how it made her feel. And I just felt jealous. But there's no way I'm gay. I mean, I only feel this way about Stacy, not anyone else. But I can't tell her I like her, 
because she's with Jed. There's no way she'd be interested in me. If I told her how I feel, I'd lose her friendship, and I couldn't bear it if we weren't friends. I can't stop thinking about her, though. When I see her holding Jed's hand, I imagine it's my hand she's holding. I really want to tell her about my crush, but there's no way she likes me that way. I never thought hanging out with my best friend could be so painful and lonely. I used to be able to talk about everything. But now I talk to her less and less, and she spends more and more time with Jed. Stacy's still my best friend, and she doesn't know my biggest secret, and I'll never be able to tell her. I feel like my heart's breaking, but what can I do? I'm not gay. I've just got a crush on my best friend, and it's the worst feeling in the world. I always struggled to make friends at school. I was that weird kid. You know, the one who sits in a corner looking at everyone else having fun, wishing they could join in. But by the time I went to high school, I'd given up on having a social life, and my weekends were spent binge-watching anime on YouTube instead of going to the mall with everyone else. All that changed when a new girl started at my school. She was really cool and outgoing, and everyone wanted to hang with her, so I was stunned when she came over to me and asked my name. I couldn't even answer at first because I was so surprised she wanted to talk to me. She sat next to me at lunch, even though she could have sat with anyone she wanted. We quickly became close friends. We talk so much in class, we get in trouble. And then we continued talking on Snapchat when we went home. I couldn't remember ever being this happy. Everyone needs a good friend, and I had the best. We started going to the mall at the weekend. It was so much fun trying on clothes we were never going to buy and testing makeup. But then one day, I tried on a top and my friend told me how cute it looked on me. I really wanted to buy it, but I didn't have any money. She told me I should just stuff it in my bag. I told her stealing was wrong, so we put the top back. But when we went to get a burger afterwards, she gave me the top. She'd stolen it for me. I didn't want to wear the top. Every time I looked at it, I thought how wrong it was to take it. But I didn't want to hurt my friend's feelings. So next time we went to the mall, I put it on. I had to admit, it did look good on me. So while we were out, my friend dared me to steal some lip gloss because she liked the color. I didn't want to, but she told me that I owed her for getting me the top. I slipped it into my purse, and then we left the store. My heart was pounding, and I was sweating, thinking that any minute someone would come after us. But nobody did. After that first time, it got easier. Every weekend, my friend and I went to the mall and helped ourselves to whatever we wanted. We became even closer, and I loved being able to have everything all the other kids got. But that changed one day. I just swiped some stuff and went to leave the store. But just as I left, a security guard grabbed me, and my friend ran, leaving me all alone. Oof. It was so humiliating. They called my parents, and I've never seen them so angry. I had to sign some paperwork, promising I'd never go back to the store again. I got lucky. They could have called the cops, and it would have been so much worse. My friend said sorry for running out on me, but it was never the same between us. The worst bit was I got into all that trouble and all I took was a couple of candy bars. Now I'm too afraid to go anywhere near the mall in case I get in trouble and I'm back to sitting on my own again. I wish I just said no when my friend asked me to steal for her. It was supposed to be a romantic meal with my boyfriend, Jeremy. We were out on our first ever grown-up date at the fanciest restaurant in town, but now I was left sitting at the table crying and alone. Jeremy had said that he was going to the bathroom over an hour ago and hadn't come back. I called him so many times I had lost count, but there had been no answer. I knew that I didn't have enough money to pay for the luxury meals that Jeremy had ordered us. The waiter was looking and pointing at me. I think he knew something wasn't right. I was embarrassed beyond words. 
I realized I might have to call my parents to get me out of this mess. How embarrassing. The waiter approached the table. I had a vision of myself stood in the restaurant kitchen doing the washing up. Then the waiter said something that really surprised me. He told me that my bill had been paid by that young lady and pointed to the door of the restaurant. When I turned my head, I saw the girl he was referring to. She had her back to us and was walking out of the restaurant. I wondered who that girl was. I hoped she wasn't one of the girls in my school. That would be so embarrassing. That night, I went home, and Jeremy still wasn't answering my calls. I was so angry at him, but also worried. What if there was something wrong? We had only been dating for a couple of weeks. He was the most popular guy at school and so good looking. The next day at school, I saw Jeremy talking to a cheerleader. He whispered something in her ear, which made her laugh. I walked up to him and asked, can I have a word with you? I couldn't believe it when he replied, maybe later, I'm busy at the moment. <laughs> I'm supposed to be his girlfriend. I wished that the earth would swallow me up. The cheerleader laughed at me and whispered in Jeremy's ear. I returned to class thinking, why was Jeremy treating me that way? Did I do something wrong yesterday? Maybe I had, and that was why he had left the restaurant and didn't want to talk to me now. Jeremy ignored me for the rest of the day. It was only after I had left school that he sent me a DM. He apologized to me. He said that he had had a stomach ache at the restaurant, and that was why he had left without saying goodbye. Maybe I'd been too harsh on him? I messaged him back, saying that I hoped he felt better. He responded and suggested that he make it up to me by taking me on a date to a burger restaurant nearby that night. I didn't feel comfortable with the idea for a moment. However, I couldn't resist Jeremy's good looks. I accepted and rushed home after school to get ready. That night, I went to the restaurant to meet Jeremy. When I got there, I saw that Jeremy had brought two of his friends along with their girlfriends. I was unsure at first. I wanted it to be just the two of us, but it turned into a fun night. Jeremy ordered a lot of food, probably enough to feed 20 people, but it was fine, nothing to worry about, because this time, if Jeremy decided to run away, his friends would be the ones to pay for the food. But Jeremy was acting really strange. He kept ordering sodas for me, even when I said I didn't want one. Whenever I would refuse to drink any more of it, he would tell me that I was being ungrateful. I drank so much, my stomach started to look like a balloon. I excused myself to go to the bathroom, but when I returned, I found the table empty and on it was the bill. They had all ditched me. I looked around to see where Jeremy and everyone had gone, but instead I locked eyes with the restaurant owner. He stood near the door with his arms crossed. I realized what had happened. Jeremy had tricked me into not only having to pay his bill, but having to pay for all his friends' meals too. That was why he had ordered so much. <sighs> then I heard a girl's voice behind me. I'll pay, she said. I turned and saw the same girl who had been in the restaurant last night. She was smiling at me and had her purse in her hand. I realized she was about my age and looked very much like Jeremy. She paid the bill and turned to leave. But this time, I followed her out and asked her why she had helped me out again. And more importantly, why she had been following me. She stopped and turned to face me and said, Jeremy. Jeremy and his friends are just using you. He doesn't even love you. Hearing those words from a stranger was painful, especially because I knew that she was right. I thought that dating the most handsome guy in my school would make me more popular, but in reality, what was happening was the exact opposite. I was letting Jeremy treat me like dirt and it was making me miserable. We started to talk, and she told me who she was. She told me that she was Jeremy's twin sister. That was why she looked so much like him. Her name was Jessie, and she went to a different school. She told me that she hated her brother's actions so much. She hated to see him hurt people, and she hated that he made her family look bad. I liked Jessie. She was kind and confident, way more confident than me. I bet she would never let a boyfriend make a fool of her like I had let Jeremy make a fool out of me. We exchanged numbers and I went home. That night, I did something I never thought I would be brave enough to do. I broke up with Jeremy. I was too scared to call him or do it face to face. So I sent him a really long text message telling him how he had hurt and humiliated me, that I was worth more and I wasn't going to put up with it anymore.
Once I sent it, I sat for ages waiting for a reply. I waited for so long. Then I could see that he was typing. I didn't know what I was expecting, but I was expecting a lot more than what I got. He just messaged back a thumbs up. A thumbs up? I had just poured my heart out to him, and he couldn't even be bothered to type some words? Ah, but I realized he probably couldn't care less. I knew that now we had broken up, he would just move on to the next naive victim he could find, probably the cheerleader he was making laugh the other day. The next day, Jesse texted me and asked if I wanted to meet. We met at a coffee shop after school, and I told her what had happened. It was weird. She seemed excited that I had broken up with him. She told me that she had a plan to embarrass Jeremy and needed my help. She told me she had sent flirtatious Tinder messages to several weird girls from a fake account she had set up in Jeremy's name. She needed my help to make her look like Jeremy as much as possible. The plan wasn't very clear to me, but... If it was going to embarrass Jeremy, I wanted to be a part of it. After school, we went shopping in the men's section and bought clothes similar to what Jeremy would wear and prepared Jessie for her first date. Later at my house, I helped her tuck her hair under a hat and put makeup onto her to make her look masculine. Then she went and changed into her new clothes. When she got changed, I was so shocked. Even I couldn't tell Jessie and Jeremy apart. The first girl that Jessie asked out loved to collect cockroaches and bugs. <laughs> she even wore a t-shirt with a huge picture of a cockroach on to her date with Jessie. <laughs> She and Jessie went to hang out at the zoo, while I played my part by keeping an eye on the surrounding area to ensure that Jeremy and his friends weren't around. Jessie started taking selfies with the girl, and then she did so with every one of the girls that she had gone on a date with. She asked them to post the photos to their socials and to tag Jeremy in them. It wasn't long until everyone was talking about how Jeremy was a cheat. Jessie was so smart and funny. I was soon hanging out with her almost all all the time. Soon, my feelings became deeper, and I started to feel an attraction to her. I never knew that I was into girls, but Jessie was different. She was unlike anyone else that I'd met. Jeremy was no longer dating the cheerleader, and his popularity had suffered a serious blow. There were rumors going around school that he was constantly getting messages from random girls who he had met once, then stood up. And he kept claiming that he didn't know any of them. But that wasn't enough for me and Jesse. I had another idea of how to really humiliate Jeremy. I said we should send multiple messages to all the girls, apologizing for not calling them after the first date, and asking them out on another one. We would get them to all meet at the same time and place. Then we would call the real Jeremy and get him to arrive and meet them all at once. <laughs> when I told Jessie my suggestion, she laughed her head off. She loved my idea. We texted all the girls and asked them to come to the same burger restaurant on Thursday at 5. Setting Jeremy up was my mission. I sent him a message telling him that I was sorry for everything that had been going on with his life lately and that I wanted to make it up for him by taking him out for a meal. I told him I missed him and wanted to get back together. He messaged me back saying, okay. I couldn't believe how gullible he was. On Thursday, me and Jesse waited for Jeremy at a table in the corner of the restaurant and watched while the restaurant was getting crowded with weird girls. It wasn't long before the restaurant was filled with girls and Jeremy walked in. <laughs> the look in his eyes was as if he had just walked into a bad Field. He looked terrified as the girls surrounded him and started to have a go at him for ditching them. When they realized that they were all meeting Jeremy, they thought he was playing some kind of sick joke on them. They shouted at him and told him to get lost. None of them wanted him now. He ran out of the restaurant looking so embarrassed. Uh, me and Jesse were rolling on the floor laughing. Our revenge was complete. <laughs> Ah, then I looked at all the girls in the room, and I stopped laughing. I realized that by using these girls to get our revenge, we were being just as bad as Jeremy. 
We shouldn't have been manipulating people for our own gains. I stood up and explained everything to the girls in the room, and I apologized to them. Some of them started to get angry at me. Some of them understood and forgave us. It wasn't easy, but I knew we had to admit the truth. Soon, everyone had gone, and Jessie and I were the last people in the restaurant. She took my hand and told me that I had done the right thing, and that I was even braver than her. Then, she leaned in and kissed me. I had butterflies in my stomach. After the kiss, I told her that I had feelings for her as well, but I had been scared to tell her. From that day on, me and Jessie started dating, and I couldn't be happier. Now I've learned that I shouldn't manipulate others just to get revenge on someone. Have you ever been treated badly by a partner? Or have you ever taken your revenge on someone who hurt you? Leave your stories in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.